please welcome to the stage Senior Vice President, Security and Developer Platform, Mahesh Thiagarajan. Hello everyone, I'm Mahesh Thiagarajan. I lead Security and Developer Platform, as if you couldn't read. But um, I'm super excited to talk to you about application development and how Oracle is truly working on giving you the freedom and choice on building applications very easily on Oracle Cloud. One of the hardest challenges that I, you know, even today when I was talking to customers and hearing their stories, it was kind of obvious that most customers are still on that journey to migrate clouds. And if you went to Clay's keynote, you heard it's been about 15 years since the advent of cloud, but only about 32% of the apps have moved to the cloud. Why? And the fundamental challenge has to do around this idea that, hey, we have to jump to cloud native tomorrow. Cloud native is important. Lots of new applications are being built. But the expectation that that has to happen tomorrow is not real. So today I'll talk about what Oracle is doing to easily allow you to extend your applications and talk more. So our belief is that app development and modernization doesn't have to be that complicated. And when I talk to customers, right, you know, I, I have the story about you know, something that happened four years ago, but when you truly take a step back and look at what customers really want and what, what is happening in the back offices, it's clear there are a certain set of applications that can move to the cloud. I'm hearing that, hey, a complex set of traditional and cloud-native apps have to integrate with each other. It is obvious that multi-cloud is the reality. 82% of the enterprises have chosen multi-cloud. How can I do app development in this space? And from an Oracle perspective, it is about freedom and choice. And we believe in the power of and. What do I mean by that? We believe that you should be able to extend and enhance your applications into the cloud easily at your own pace. We believe that you should be able to bring any third-party software and leverage the open standards on Oracle Cloud. You obviously have to innovate and invent and do new cool things on top of the cloud-native innovations that's actually happening, and Oracle gives you a choice of doing that as well. But how does the infrastructure power? What are the unique differences that Oracle has actually made in the infrastructure layer to allow you to build those applications. First, obviously everybody is aware of the fact that, hey, we have a computers, you can buy bare metal, you have VM, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But what Oracle did differently was truly take something at the compute level and saying, look, you get a computer, sure, but why does it have to be a two core, a four core, an eight core VM with a preset memory ratio that says, for every core you get 15 gigs of RAM? Why, apps are not made that way. That was just a predetermined idea that some cloud had. We said, why should that be the case? And we went and invented the idea that you should be able to get a, a five core 60 gig RAM computer. And that should actually like work against what your application needs. And today I actually met a customer and I hadn't heard of them before, but I had a, a great meeting where they said, hey, your flex infrastructure and I have a traditional application that saves me hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. Right? And this is the power and the difference with which Oracle has actually inf innovated at the infrastructure level to make your lives easy, especially for your applications coming into the cloud. And second is really around the networking layer. When you think about on-prem applications and the cloud, a lot of the times, you know, oh, on-prem applications have, behave a certain way. They use L2 virtualization and L2 networking. Those apps can't move to the cloud. But why? Who made that up? Because it's like, oh, we have L3 virtualization built in the cloud, so everybody else has to like move to that model. But we said, no, that can't be the standard. If people believe and if applications have to move from on-prem to the cloud, we have to invent and do L2 virtual networking. And we did that. So that's how we power the VMware cloud service, if people didn't know, power, is powered by some of the L2 virtualization uh, investments that we have made. And a lot of what we do on the infrastructure layer is to actually give built-in security that guarantees that, hey, you know, the application, the computers, and the things that you are using are very secure. We talk about off-box virtualization, where every single computer in our cloud actually has an off-box virtualization device. 
that is protecting and has the right level of isolation. We had to make tremendous amount of investments in Oracle Linux to really guarantee and protect our code running independently of the code that you're running. Protecting your applications and the traffic being isolated away from other applications, other customers who may be on the same bare metal machine in VMs. So a lot of this was fundamental infrastructure innovations that we had to do to truly say, we understand our customers and we're not gonna tell you to fit into our model, but we're gonna fit into what you need. And what that did was power a lot of applications. Traditional cloud native apps, we have lots of customers doing exciting HPC and machine learning work. We have compute intensive applications who are just infrastructure hungry. We have network intensive apps. I talked about low latency. You know, in fact, some of the work that we did um, on the Elto virtual networking is, is exactly how Rack, Oracle Rack is powered on our cloud. Right? Our Oracle Rack is not possible on any other cloud because those fundamental investments are not possible. So if you take a step back and think about what Oracle is actually offering you at the core level, there are a set of platform services, a beat compute, network, storage services, file storage, object, block, and networking. You have a, a plethora of choices when it comes to our core infrastructure that makes it easy. And I'll talk more about containers a little later. Second, you have a great infrastructure, but you need the right data platform to solve the challenges that you want. And Oracle, being the data company, gives you a plethora of choices, starting from Oracle databases, autonomous databases, MySQL, and I'll talk about some of the newer databases that we're launching. And second, enable AI-enabled apps. And so we're gonna talk about how some of the work, and, and we have great customers today, here today to talk about those stories as well. We talked about built-in security. How do we have a set of services and tools that are prescriptive and deeply integrated that makes your life easy so you're getting off the ground, thinking about building apps, not worrying about trying to set up security, not trying to you know, parallelize infrastructure and app migration along with security tooling migration. We don't want you to do two things. We wanted to focus on application migration so you can be at peace of mind with some of the services that we have built. And lastly, as you move these applications, having a strategy around how you operate your applications. And our fundamental strategy around observability and management is, is two-pronged. We fundamentally believe that we need to give customer choice, even on operations. We understand that you may have standardized on a certain set of tools today, be it Elasticsearch, be it any other platform. We need to be able to push our logs and metrics and events into systems that you're already using so you don't have to take time changing your operational posture on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And we purpose built select set of services like Service Connector Hub that will literally enable you to move data to those third party applications or your operation center that you're using today. And lastly, embrace the language of your choice. We want to give you the flexibility to choose the language, build great platforms, and have the right infrastructure with the flexibility that you need. And that is a complete app development platform that you have at Oracle. So I want to talk a little bit about the open nature of our cloud and what it truly means. There are many dimensions to when people say they're open, right? Step one is, hey, we, we have an ability to adopt an open standard. It's just an easy strategy, it's simple, that's one part. But Oracle goes way beyond that. The first thing that we did was we want to not only adopt open standards, but we're gonna actually build our services, our managed services, our serverless services on top of these standards, ensuring that when you're moving applications, when you're thinking about on-prem, when you want to like move into another cloud, you're actually standards-based that makes your life easy to build these apps and not worry about getting locked in. So that's part one. There's tons of services here. If you look at a data flow service, Apache Spark compatible. You look at our streaming service, it's Kafka compatible. You look at our event service, it's CNCF Cloud Events 1.0 compatible. You look at our agent strategy for pushing logs and metrics, it's Fluentd compatible. So fundamentally, every choice that we make around allowing you to develop, giving you that freedom and choice and not locking you in. So that's really around the managed services. 
But you go further and start looking at, hey, how can I bring my own sort of tooling, my own, you know, I want to bring Redis and I want to do all of those things. The infrastructure is flexible that can actually power a lot of these applications at extremely low cost. So you can bring all of those at the infrastructure layer and we'll continue to innovate and bring, you know, take that forward. The third piece of the puzzle is really around tooling, right? Fun, the, the, not only does it matter to actually have a great infrastructure, build services that are open, but you have to integrate with the tools because there's the ecosystem and the tools that exist out there and the plethora of them and the new ones that are coming up, we're constantly working with all of these you know, CNCF event providers and ensuring that we're supporting OCI, first class OCI modules in each one of those things. Crossplane is a new, new CNCF project that we're actually contributing OCI provider for, and we're gonna to continue to do that. And lastly, we participate in a lot of the open communities, like CNCF and a lot of them, and we also contribute code. So that's on the standards-based services and tooling. But what does true open truly mean? It is allowing the best of breed technology that Oracle actually has, allowing you to take that technology. If you've chosen another cloud provider, not saying that, hey, if you want to use Oracle database, you have to come to our cloud. It's not what we do. Our open strategy goes beyond the managed services and tooling that we'd say. We say, hey, you can take the greatest, the best that we have in terms of autonomous database, MySQL Heatwave, MySQL Lakehouse, and you can connect in a secure way and, and make it work in other cloud providers. We have even gone to the level, if you have not heard of the Oracle Alloy announcement, I'll talk a bit more about it, where we're now taking the power of the cloud and giving it to the hands of ISVs, SIs, MSPs, and saying, take it to the location that you want. Build and extend your differentiated IP on top of our cloud. So take our cloud, extend and build a service that looks like our service, and you actually go sell it to our customers. So if you look at our open strategy, starting from standards-based to operating and moving our databases into other clouds, and also saying, take our cloud, do what you want to do with it, and giving you the power, that is truly being open. So talking a little bit more about what does this actually mean, today if you take a step back and think about what it takes to build a service in a cloud, um, there is a rich set of security posture, there is deep platform integration that makes all of these services work really well. But what Oracle is going to do is to package this whole SDK and this toolkit and the way we build our services. So with Alloy, you can actually build services natively on our platform. And we hear from our customers all the time. All of the innovations that I'm talking about at the infrastructure layer delivers customer value. We have customer stories that goes from, hey, I was able to take some of the applications that I was building 40 times faster to the market. I love, I love your tooling. I'm, I'm glad you're using a standards-based approach so I don't have to reinvent the application or rewrite the application to your APIs. We chose to actually, you know, uh, for our orchestration platform, we standardized on Terraform. The ability for a customer to move their application and not having to think about, oh, let's rewrite the whole automation again for this app. You don't have to do that. We see 40% reduced cost. Most customers see a tremendous amount of savings with our, with our pricing strategy. And that's just to name a few customers who are on our platform. You heard from Adept, we're doing some interesting work on AI. So we have lots of customers in all of these different apps, but and now I want to talk, and I want you to hear from Xerox, who are doing some exciting work on HPC, but also extending further and using our um, EPM and ERP applications as well. Xerox, it's had over a hundred year history of a very strong culture of innovation. We're really focused on very high value impacts on either business, on society, on planet, in 3D additive, in uh, clean tech, all of the industrial commercial grade IoT technologies. These are huge spaces and markets that we have substantial amount of IP 
and we have a, a, an amazing story and journey ahead of us. We pursue a multi-cloud strategy to create this multi-dimensional digital experience across partners, customers, employees. Oracle's put together a strategy and enabling architecture, the roadmaps to help us accelerate and execute fairly rapidly. What's nice about the architecture we've put in place is that it's tightly integrated. We've created standards-based APIs or interfaces that can easily transport data to other entities. What we're able to do is aggregate the data with um, all of the different solution stacks. We have moot and automation-based ecosystem. So there's a lot of robotics and process automation, very powerful analytics in place. And then you have the fundamental technology that operates and runs the entire business, whether it's all of the procure to pay, quote to cash, or quote to report, or plan bill ship processes. What it's helped us do is operate in a very simple, nimble, agile way. We were able to spin up all these businesses in literally 90 days, which uh, was very, very important. A lot of our technology is going to have very pervasive implications and global impact on billions of people. The question is, how do you set it up so that it's easily accessible and easily monetizable? We can accelerate a lot of this technology into our markets. We've got to solve these problems now. The single biggest challenge for all of us right now in all of the new industries we're going after to have this sort of impact is how quickly can we get there and how can we execute the agenda universally. You just heard from Xerox about how they leverage our complete platform and, and still have a multi-cloud story. I want to talk now about what I consider to be sort of three different patterns. There's lots more patterns, but three different patterns that I believe in how applications are getting built and how Oracle is helping you solve these problems. Our fundamental philosophy is giving you that freedom and choice and meeting you where you are and enabling you to run great apps without actually making you fit into our model. Diving into building and extending apps. What percentage of critical apps do you think still reside on premises? I think I gave that answer away already. But. 80%, that's still a lot, right? And if you truly try to understand why is that happening, there are many different reasons. There are reasons around, hey, I really believe that the data is actually super secure and I don't wanna move it out of the data center. But in some cases, it's really around like, it doesn't fit, I can't move it. I'm happy to invent, invent and build new cloud native applications, right? So how can you extend your enterprise applications and what can you do? One of the things that I, I wanna talk about is, you can choose to improve end customer experiences, the chatbots, voice interfaces, and we have a set of AI services that can sit on the perimeter, extend your apps very carefully, be it Oracle Digital Assistant or our AI services. Second, you can choose to carefully change the user interfaces and the front ends of your web applications carefully, especially if you're on top of Oracle database. You can do that, we have done this internally, and use Apex as a method to move, start moving in that direction. Three, you can build connected experiences and power some of the things that Xerox is doing. SaaS applications to our Oracle Cloud infrastructure, where you can leverage Oracle Integration Cloud to carefully move events and data and take collective actions on top of our function service. You can create more intelligent customer experiences by choosing to leverage some of our messaging platform. Modernize your architecture very carefully where these events are sitting in a in a, in, a, in a queue or, or a stream, and you can actually build rich container-native applications that can start doing more interesting things and extend those apps. And lastly, you can choose to converge your operations, data operation centers to drive better outcomes, better customer experiences by saying, hey, I have a plethora of choices when it comes to a full stack observability. Maybe I can leverage those services. I'm using some legacy third-party platform stuff. Second, building cloud native applications. What is Oracle doing in this space? If you take a step back and think about what is the industry doing and how many new cloud native applications will be launched by 2023, that's a lot. So a tremendous amount of investments going in this space. Everybody's bought into the idea of doing distributed systems architecture, building things on containers, leveraging the benefits of scaling out and scaling in based on needs so you can save costs. 
get you more agility so your teams can actually independently change code without actually having a waterfall model. So lots of really good benefits. But are you getting the right infrastructure choices for doing that? So if you look at Oracle, you, we have, we're, we have a plethora of choices, starting from a bare metal machine to virtual machines. You can run your containers on do it your own Kubernetes for the power hungry users. We have supported cluster API for Kubernetes. So for folks who are actually using Kubernetes as the primary management plane, they can leverage that. We're announcing container instances. Today we already have customer managed node support in OKE, where the control plane and the management of it is completely taken away. We're introducing the notion of serverless Kubernetes with virtual nodes and pre-built functions. All of this is to give you the flexibility so you don't have to go through the pain. Now, there's lots of customers who are interested in more control, depending on the application choice that they have. We want to give that too, but at the same time, you get agility as you start moving towards the right. So this is a new platform that is available in limited availability, which is serverless Kubernetes with OK virtual nodes, where, cust where Oracle now takes on the responsibility of managing the infrastructure for the customer nodes. This, this takes care of the patching efforts that you actually have to go through to do OS patching. The application patching still remains with you, so you control your availability. But slowly and progressively, Oracle is giving you the automation, the work, and taking the undifferentiated heavy lifting away from you. And with container instances, you can securely deploy containers and easily scale out to containers in seconds. You do not need any Kubernetes or infrastructure management skills. This is out of the box. So you can easily get started, kind of kick the tires, play around, use it for elastic scaling use cases. Pre-built functions. Today I met a customer who did not know that our support for moving data seamlessly using Connector Hub existed. This is a common challenge where the, the cloud evolves at such a fast pace that it is, it's very hard for customers to find. So we're coming up with the notion of pre-built function that gives you the flexibility to quickly get started without spending too much time on how can I move data? How can I do some standard tasks? How can I bring, how can I you know, build, build a new thing without having to spend too much time? On the messaging platform side, we're introducing the notion of OCI queues, which is a serverless, fully managed service where customers just have to create queues and we take care of all of the work on the back end. And it is going to be Stomp compatible. And as I talked about the open standards-based approach in all of our services, we're gonna to continue to do that. We're gonna make it easy for you to move your on-prem applications that may have Stomp support easily onto OCI queues so you don't have to do the infrastructure management. OCI workflows. When you think about what is really happening in the cloud, there are about three different problems that exists. One is, hey, there's tremendous amount of infrastructure, IT management tasks, things that I need to do. I need to start computers. I need to stop computers. Um, things that is sort of like mundane, but you have to end up writing a lot of scripts for. There are actions that you can orchestrate very carefully based on events in the system. I talked about how extending SaaS applications can seamlessly work with infrastructure. The SaaS apps and the changes in those SaaS apps generate a lot of events. You can create connected experiences to leverage workflows to do those activities. And one of the cool things about the workflow is that we have spent a lot of time to make the graphical design experience so you can get started without you know, losing, getting into the complexity. And, and lastly, one of the things we've done with the workflow services automatically enable every single services API in OCI to be deeply integrated with our workflows so you don't have to write a lot of code. But how do you get started? I just announced seven services. You have lots of different um, um, existing services as well. I wanted to just talk about what Oracle has been and, and being the leader in Java and MySQL. If you take a step back and think about what developers still use and how many pers what percentage of the applications, Java is still the leading language that our customers prefer, it's still running. And MySQL is the most popular database of developers. 
And Oracle is the, is the company that actually is innovating on both of these fronts. You, you guys heard all of the great inno innovations that we announced in Java and Java 1. You heard about all of the MySQL, MySQL Lakehouse, ML innovations on MySQL as well. Especially on Java, right? Some of the tech around GraalVM, is, it's, it's not obvious or clear to customers how powerful that can actually be. You can take your existing Java application and actually seamlessly move it on top of GraalVM, and it gives you a tremendous amount of performance ben benefits, either with its just-in-time compilers or look at compiler capabilities that it has. And you can also, it also supports a, lots of other languages too. So from your perspective, you don't have to rewrite your code. Oracle has done the innovation to allow you to move it so you can get the benefits at 30% performance application throughput and, and marry that with the flexible infrastructure that we have. You're starting to save a tremendous amount of cost for high, high, high performance applications. Obviously, with MySQL, the innovation just keeps rolling. Right? I'm going to talk more detail about how, what we're doing on MySQL with ML, but this is uh, one of the things, and from a technology perspective, we're super proud of. And if you look at the price points for what a developer or a customer should actually pay for, it is extremely inexpensive with the highest performance possible. It takes down a ton of databases of all the other cloud providers easily. I want to jump into talking about the future and what you can build and make possible on our cloud. A lot of the AI innovation that you heard at uh, Cloud World. If you look at what is the average number of sources, data sources, that enterprise applications still use, it is insane. There's a tremendous amount of data that's coming in. The volume of data into the platform is just continuing, continuously growing. Getting a handle on that problem is super hard. But before I dive in and talk more about it, I'm going to invite Zubin Irani, Chief Revenue Officer of SoundHound, tell you a bit more about how they use Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and build their AI applications. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you guys. Uh, give me a few minutes to speak here today and share our story. Um, I wanted to go back and give you a, you know, how did SoundHound start and, and show a little bit our, our, about our first cloud. So our, our uh, our company was founded in a dorm room at Stanford 17 years ago. And that was, that's our first cloud, right there. Uh, a bunch of uh, diskless servers sitting on some IKEA furniture with a bunch of fans in our founder's uh, dorm room. Um, we're still not quite sure how we slept uh, with those fans running, but some of them did. And that was how Soundhound was born. Uh, we've come a long way since then. And I'll tell you a little bit about our journey. But first, let me, oops, first let me tell you a little bit about, let me show you a video that we, that we uh, to actually show our technology in action. How many days are there between the day after tomorrow and three days before the second Thursday of November of 2022? There are 2,714 days between the day after tomorrow and Monday, November 7th, 2022. What is the population and capital for Japan and China and their areas in square miles and square kilometers? And also tell me how many people live in India and what is the area code for Germany, France, and Italy? population is 127 million 288 thousand for Japan and 1 billion 330 million 44 thousand for China and the capital is Tokyo for Japan and Beijing for China the area is 145 thousand 882 square miles and 377 thousand 834 square kilometers for Japan and 3 million 705 thousand 386 square miles and 9 million 596 thousand 959 square kilometers for China the population of India is 1 billion 173 million 108 thousand 18 the area code is 49 for Germany 33 for France and 39 for Italy Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> um, and that video is from seven years ago. Our tech has actually gotten significantly better since then. I apologize for the quality of it, uh, of, the, of the video. But you can see what we handle very complex voice, voice queries. Um, we we saw those responses. There's a millisecond type response. That's all from a cell phone. Right? That's the type of technology we're building. Um, and so what we've done in the last 17 years, you know, we spent 10 years building our platform. Right, in stealth mode, we spent over $400 million investing in our, our, our technology and our IP. Uh, along the way, we've grown. We've added you know, 38 languages, so we can do, we can do that same demo in, in 38 languages. Um, we're in millions of cars and TVs, um, and in some of the biggest brands like MasterCard and Vizio, you see up there as well. 
Um, we're processing about 2 billion transactions a year on our OCI platform. You know, we're using G, you know, bare metal GPUs with NVIDIA chips for a lot of our training and inferencing. Uh, we're also running managed Kubernetes and ML. Um, you know, one of the, obviously the, the security and data protection services have been really valuable for us. Obviously our IP is, is extremely valuable as well as all that voice data we collect. Um, so all the, the encryption at rest and in transit, it's, you know, it is a very important part. And I think going with Oracle uh, was very important for us that we, you know, have someone that, that is, you know, security first and has the scalability to handle our, our growth. Kind of mentioned we're, we're in that two billion range of transactions. You know, two years ago that was a couple hundred million and we really started scaling. Um, and with our previous provider, we really started seeing the latency improve. Uh, when we cut over, we saw a dramatic, and if I had, wish I had a graph, but we saw a dramatic drop in, in our latency when we switched to OCI. The performance improvement was more than 50%. I know, we've, I know Larry was talking about the MySQL improvements uh, yesterday. We've, we've seen that in, in production for our MySQL databases, but we've seen also throughout our whole, our whole system a significant improvement in speed, but also a reduction in cost by you know, the, about 50, 55%. Um, and then as a public company, that's really important for us is, uh, you know, that we're, we're showing those savings and as we scale and grow, that our costs are not gonna grow and that we're not gonna run into latency issues. Because uh, our, our voice, that voice has to be real time. And, you know, when we're doing voice, we're taking, you know, the ASR, the speech, the natural language, and we're trying to process that in real time, accessing back end or third party databases in some cases. Um, and we have to do that in, with millisecond type responses. A couple of uh, shout outs from a few of our clients. You may recognize some of them. And then I'll kind of leave, leave you with, with this last slide, which is, you know, why do we choose OCI? Um, we've gone through, you know, in, in the last 17 years, especially the last, you know, I think five years, we've, we've, we've really used every single uh, cloud platform out there. Um, you know, key performance was a, was a big factor for us, you know, trying to get those, those performance savings that, that everyone's been talking about. We've actually seen that. Um, and that's huge, right? When we're running and we're training lots of data, uh, it's important that from a you know, performance that we can train that data fast, it's important that we get the throughput we need um, and, and without that, the latency. Uh, cost is important, you know, from an inflection standpoint, as we scale our business, we, we cannot have our costs scale exponentially. Um, security, yeah, I, can't, I can't emphasize how important security is. I think the managed, you know, when we get into managed services, that's another big thing. Like we, we want our engineers you know, writing algorithms. We want our engineers working on the, the pure tech. We don't want them having to deal with um, you know, a lot of the services that, that typically you know, teams get bogged down with. Um, and I think that the most important one is the, really the last one, like the, the good partner. Oracle's been such a great partner with us. They're not competing with us. They're bringing us to market. They're working, you know, for instance, we have a restaurant business where we're helping restaurants transform, whether that's through drive-through automation, phone ordering, kiosk uh, ordering, and Oracle's bringing us in. They're, they're introducing their food and beverage group. We've even built an integration into Symphony, which sits on top of Micros, and it's been a fantastic relationship. And uh, you know, I'd say Oracle's been you know, a great partner. You ask our engineers, and you know, the nice thing is we didn't have to go through all these, you know, I know, I know certain companies have like tons and tons of certifications and takes years to be able to learn how to use their platforms because they lock you into their way of working um, you know, for us, it was, it was days and, and weeks before, we, and, and then we're, we're moving. Um, so being able to get that migration done quickly really is, I think, to the, the, the nature of that partnership we've had with Oracle. And it's, it's been a phenomenal experience. So thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great story. Now let's talk a little bit more about how some of the things that Zubin and team talked about in terms of the data platform and how that powers your applications, especially around AI. One of the fundamental things that we need to have for great application platform and application development is a, is a set of choices that makes it easy for you to do all the things around data and actually still maintain your costs. So Oracle has a plethora of choices, be it on the data movement side, managed open source databases, data stores like object storage. We have a great variety of choices, probably one of the best in the industry around data management, be it autonomous database, Oracle database, NoSQL capabilities, MongoDB compatibility on Oracle database, MySQL, MySQL Heatwave. 
The plethora of choices that are available for customers to build applications on Oracle Cloud is phenomenal. And data matters. And the, and the low latency infrastructure that is available to build these applications, these high performance applications, these AI intensive applications is, is super important. <clears throat> you heard the announcements from Jensen and Safra about the NVIDIA AI platform on OCI. I'm super thrilled about some of the things. If you look at AI, um, a lot of innovative research work has happened over the last three years, but the democratization has truly hasn't happened. It requires a phenomenal amount of human effort, but companies like SoundHound are bringing it to the masses from an application perspective. But if you want to actually have you know, a different set of AI activities done in your application, Oracle is partnering with NVIDIA to bring their um, CUDA platform and their software platform, including NVIDIA Rapids, that makes it easy for you to leverage GPUs at a more, more deeper level on your infrastructure. And one of the cool things with Rapids is that they've also built an NVIDIA Rapids accelerator for data for Apache Spark. Now, that Apache Spark capability is integrating with our data flow service, which is very powerful for customers who are looking to do intensive applications on top of Spark with CUDA. Apex. Apex is, is one of those applications that has been around for a long time. It is something that customers of Oracle Database heavily use very, very close to the database. Well, one of the most exciting things about Apex that I love is how close it sits to the database. If you build a web application on top of Apex, the amount of snappiness and the user experience that you provide to your customers is super high. And that low latency capabilities is, is pretty phenomenal. Now, there are a few announcements that is coming out in 22.2 that is even more interesting is previously it used to have sort of like a PL SQL model of actually writing intensive operations that you need to do on your database, but they've introduced a new language, which is super powerful. So it's a declarative language that makes it easy for you to now start using Apex, even if you're not exceptionally familiar with PLSQL and Oracle database. We talked about MySQL Heatwave. There's some phenomenal capabilities in the database itself where you can actually store trained models, which is pretty exciting for me and how it can actually help you do in database machine learning. So now once again, your models are accessing data right, right next to it. And that enables you to build applications that give these extremely low latency experiences for your customer. We talked about a lot of different databases, but one of the things that we are also spending time on is fundamentally building a data platform that can power a lot of the open source databases as well, right? We have customers who truly actually still have applications built on top of PostgreSQL. Obviously they can move them, but going by, my, by the principle that I talked about early, we need to make it easy and meet you where you are. So we're actually building a data platform that is going to make it easy for us to be PostgreSQL compatible and more open source databases in the future. With that, I'm going to welcome Eric Bergenholz, Vice President of Software Development, to show some of these services in action. That was awesome, Mahesh. And you saved the best for last, well, except for Zubin. Uh, so I'm super excited. I want to show you a demo that we have built, really for the purpose of illustrating some of the concepts and constructs that Mahesh has covered today. This is an app that we spent about two, two and a half, three days to build. Um, it's quite, it's simple, but it's, it is really sophisticated. So we make use of many of the constructs in the OCI platform, especially serverless capabilities. And that's really what's enabled us to build this application uh, quite quickly. The app has a lot of other capabilities that we just can't get into now, but if you catch me after, after the, uh, after the talk, or you can download the application um, as well. You can take a closer look. So I'm going to narrate a, uh, a demo. Um, I have to didn't quite trust me to do a, a live demo here. So before we get into it, let me first show you how the application works. So this is a loan origination application. We're going to apply for a loan. And we do that by simply filling out a form. And we're going to pretend here today to be Joseph Stample. And we're going to upload a copy of his driver's license. And as you can see, Joe is pretty excited to be here. We'll submit that to our application. And here's kind of where the magic happens. 
we'll take a look at the architecture. Let me explain to you exactly what's happening here. So the application is really made up of kind of two parts. We have a containerized web app that's deployed on Kubernetes, OK in this case. We're supported by OCI DevOps for, for development and deployment. And the top portion of the architecture is really on the serverless capabilities that we're using. So we're making use of functions for many of the interactions from the web app. We're making use of OCI Workflow, which is one of the new services that we announced today, as well as the AI Vision service and some ancillary services for communicating back to the customer. Let's take a look at the workflow in a little bit more detail. So we've built a workflow called AI License Check Send Email, and it does what you think it does. Let's open the canvas and look here. So the nice thing about the workflow is it allows us to extract business logic from our application that's apt to change over time. So we can declaratively evolve that logic without having to get a developer involved, potentially. So let's see if we can make sense out of this workflow. So first, we have a request that comes in. The first thing we do is we interact with the AI Vision service to do that license check. We next do a credit check. If all that passes, we'll do make a final determination of the loan application itself, and then finally send an email to the applicant. The cool thing here is we can actually take a look at one of the executions or one of the runs of this uh, workflow, and we can drill in and see here exactly how long uh, different st steps took, what the activities were, what the branches were that were taken. We can drill in and see the inputs and outputs. And this really allows us to save a lot of time in the development of the application. Here's one of the AI ML services that we have, and we're making use of the document AI service for the purpose of this demo. And this is all real time, so I'll, we're going to upload the same driver's license again that we had in the demo. Joe, still happy, I think. And real time here, the AI or the document AI service will analyze that image, pull out the relevant information, and as for the application builder, we get a set of key value pairs back, which is extremely easy to interact with. Not only that, we can then, in the response uh, payload, get a lot more information about the document that was analyzed. We can start to reason about confidence levels of the data that was returned to us. So that, in a nutshell, is how we built this application, leveraging many of the capabilities of the platform itself. I'll add one last thing. From a scalability perspective, this is really advantageous. The top part of the architecture, there's really not much we have to do in terms of scalability. It scales by itself. Oracle manages that part of the infrastructure. The web app itself that's deployed on Kubernetes, well, scaling that is really a breeze. So it's a nice, nice setup, I think. So with that, hopefully that was useful. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Eric. All right. So what we covered today was really Oracle's comprehensive developer portfolio that allows you to get started either extending your on-premise applications, building new cloud-native applications, or leveraging the latest and the greatest in AI and building all of these apps. We talked about how Oracle has one of the best choices in terms of infrastructure autonomy that allows you to deploy things in public cloud, a sovereign cloud, a dedicated cloud just for you, or for MSPs and ISPs and partners to also take the cloud to wherever they want, and how truly open we are, even about our infrastructure. And this is what you truly get with Oracle, all of the plethora of choices and freedom and choice with the services, with infrastructure autonomy, all at once. So we're happy to have you all come build with us. Thank you. <laughs>